If we wish to construct synthetic genes and modify eukaryotes, the first thing to be aware of is that the details of transcription and translation aren't quite the same as in prokaryotes. A eukaryotic gene doesn't look like a prokaryotic one. Transcription has some important differences. First, there are three distinct transcription processes containing distinct polymerases for distinct types of RNAs. The polymerase that makes the tRNAs is not the same complex as the one that makes mRNA or the RNA. There are three distinct promoter architectures. We'll only worry about the ones that generate mRNAs in these lectures to keep it simple. Transcription requires the mediator complex, which we'll address next. mRNAs encode a single polypeptide instead of multi-gene operons, and they have a poly A tail on the three prime end. And finally, they have a five prime cap required for translation, export, and avoiding degradation. So on a prokaryotic mRNA, you just end it on the five prime end with a triphosphate, but there's this additional seven methyl guanosine on the ends of an mRNA in a eukaryote. Regulation in prokaryotes is believed to be relatively simple. There's the sigma 70, and if it binds to the promoter, transcription occurs. If it doesn't bind, nothing else happens. In eukaryotes, there is an additional layer of control by mediator complex that binds to activators and recruits the polymerase. It's this orange cluster in the diagram. In some ways, you can think of mediator as being like sigma-70 in prokaryotes, but it contains about 20 subunits and over 1 million Daltons worth of protein, so it's a much more complicated thing. It contains an internal regulatory process called the kinase subcomplex. Not much is known about how all this works. It's a complicated molecular machine like many eukaryotic processes are. But the overall effect of this is, there's no such thing as a constitutive promoter in eukaryotes. There is always some activator. Mediator doesn't directly bind to the DNA. How operator sites influence each other is also less intuitive. All the same mechanisms, such as looping and competition for binding, are still at play, but often these operate over a long distance that cannot be explained simply based on biophysical ideas. One useful artifact of this is that off is really off in eukaryotes. It is often easier to express really toxic genes in eukaryotes than prokaryotes where leaky transcription is the norm. The activators merely recruit mediator. Transcription initiation is more of an active process than a spontaneous one, and geometry of the interactions is less constrained. This allows eukaryotic transcription factors to be more modular and diverse. They typically have distinct activation and DNA binding domains, and they don't have to be dimers. There are additional aspects of eukaryotic transcription that aren't exactly unique to them, but are far more prevalent amongst them. In addition to activators, there are enhancers that bind operator sites, sometimes many kilobases from the site of transcription initiation. Eukaryotic DNA is organized into higher order structure through the action of histones. The position of these histones relative to a promoter affects expression level. Methylation and acetylation of the histones also influences them, and it's a primary mode of controlling gene expression. There is also direct methylation of the DNA. In animals, or more specifically metazoans, CPG methylation is present in 75% of CG sites. This typically occurs in clustered regions of the genome, and they repress transcription locally. DNA methylation is also very common in prokaryotes, but it rarely plays the same sort of regulatory role that it does in eukaryotes. Though not all eukaryotes or even all animals have microRNA, higher ones have them and they play a major role in regulating pre-mRNA post-transcriptionally. Once an mRNA is generated, it often undergoes splicing which removes regions of the sequence called introns to join together fragments of the protein. Often the exons encode domains of a protein, and this separation of distinct domains enables modular recombination in such organisms. In some eukaryotes, the introns are necessary for expression. Synthetic genes that lack introns will not express as well. One gene can also give rise to multiple splice variants. Thus, one gene can encode multiple variants of a protein that may include some domains and not others. This splicing is also sometimes a target of regulation. 
Mechanistically, a microRNA encoding gene in the genome undergoes transcription resulting in a pre-microRNA transcript. This RNA is processed by drosia in the nucleus and then exported into the cytoplasm. Here Dicer performs additional cleavage to generate the microRNA as a linear, double-stranded RNA molecule. The microRNA is then loaded onto risk complexes, which then guides the cleavage of homologous sequences in other RNAs. MicroRNAs have been recognized as major components of transcriptional control in recent years. siRNA is the engineered variant of this, but the mechanism happens from genomically encoded microRNAs as well. Usually these RNAs are 21 to 23 nucleotides in length, and their sequence is complementary to an mRNA and causes degradation or influences splicing. There are additional types of microRNAs that play other roles in the cell. RNAAs are ones that activate transcription initiation. Pi RNAs are 26 to 31 nucleotides in length and are encoded in clusters in the genome. These silence selfish elements in the genome such as retrotransposons. The biology of small RNA molecules is very diverse in eukaryotes. The presence of a 5' cap on an mRNA makes translation in eukaryotes relatively simple. The machinery uses this cap to identify the molecule and initiate translation. Thus it does not have to survey the sequence for specific sequences to initiate binding. Additionally, eukaryotic genes encode one polypeptide from each mRNA. They do not have operons. The mRNA is transcribed and sliced, spliced before export from the nucleus. Translation occurs in the cytoplasm. Ribosomes look for the first ATG on 5' capped RNAs. Thus, there is not the same influence of the ribosome binding site in its conformation due to sequence context like there is in prokaryotes. Typically, uh, gene expression is actually more predictable in a eukaryote because of this. Sometimes the lack of operons is limiting for engineering. One solution is to encode internal ribosome entry sites, or IRES elements, that allow multiple polypeptides to be encoded on one mRNA molecule. IRES are frequently used in bisystronic reporters with GFP such that you can confirm the expression of the first gene by monitoring the phenotype caused by the second gene. Usually this is a fluorescent protein or an antibiotic resistance gene.